Hello everyone! Today's art project will be a printmaking activity of a spider web. This will go along great with your Charlotte's Web unit. For this lesson, you will need a styrofoam meat tray or a styrofoam plate, like one of these. You'll need a pair of scissors, a small paintbrush or a plastic spoon. You'll need paper, paint, you could use the gel paint recipe that I sent you. You'll need glue, a black marker or crayon, a paintbrush, and a plastic cap. A milk cap would work perfect. For starters, you'll want to take your, your styrofoam meat tray and cut the edges off so that you have just a flat piece from the bottom. I did that with mine already and cut out a, a square to use for my printmaking. The first thing you're going to do with a pencil or a pen, whatever you have, I'm going to use a Sharpie today so it shows up well on the camera, you're going to draw the lines for your spider web. For starters, you're going to start in the top corner and drag down at an angle to the opposite corner. We're going to do the same thing on the other side to make an X. Just like that. Then we're going to come down the center of our square and across the middle of our square. Just like that. That's what we're going to use to make our spider web frame. Now, our spider web is going to have a word in it because Charlotte liked to spin words in her webs. The word that we're going to make today is pig. So when we make the word pig on our web, we actually need to do it backwards so that when we print it, it shows up the right direction. So when I start my P, I'm actually going to start it over on the wrong side from what it would normally be like if we were writing. So over on this side, I'm going to write my letter P, and I'm going to write it backwards. The next letter I'm going to do is I, and I'm going to attach the top of my I across my web, and I'm going to bring my letters down, but the bottom doesn't have to attach to the web lines. Okay. Then the last letter that I'm going to make, once again I'm making it backwards, is the letter G. And I used all uppercase letters on mine. The next thing I'm going to do is just draw where the lines of my spider web would go as they would go around the frame of the web. This is just a guide, so if you mess up, it's not a big deal. And some of your lines may fall off of your square, and that's okay too. It doesn't all have to fit on there. Okay, so now I have my guide, and I know what I want to do when I press my indentations into my foam piece. So to do that, you can use a couple of different tools. I actually have a really small paintbrush that I'm going to use, but if you didn't have something like this, you could use a plastic spoon, the bottom of a plastic spoon, or another flat object. Because what you're going to do is just use that flat object to press the lines that you made earlier. So everywhere that I made a line, I'm going to use my tool to press an indentation on my styrofoam piece. Now I want to make sure that I go around and do this on every line that I made. Now, I don't want to take your time, so I'm going to finish this one later, and I'm going to go ahead and come to the one that I've already made. All of those lines have been pressed with my tool, and now they're ready for me to apply paint. Now, you could use an acrylic or a tempera paint if you wanted to. If you have that at home, that's great. Some of you may not have those supplies at your house, so it's perfectly fine to do a homemade paint recipe if you want to. I did send out a list of recipes um, with your teachers, so you should have that accessible to you. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do, whether you have store-bought paint 
or your own homemade paint, we're going to paint our styrofoam pattern. So I made my paint out of hair gel and food coloring. So I'm just going to make sure it's all mixed up real well. And then I'm going to brush that paint onto my printmaking template. And sometimes I make a mess, so it's not a bad idea to have a mat or some newspaper under your work. And then you just want to make sure you cover the whole template with paint. So I'm going to go from edge to edge. All right. Once you get it completely covered, your next step is to use a piece of paper applied right on the top. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to set mine right on top. And then I'm going to use my hands to make sure that I rub and transfer all of that paint from my styrofoam template onto my paper. So I want to make sure I rub and get it on each corner and in the middle. Then, very gently, I'm going to start lifting it slowly from the corner and pull it off my template, and with a little luck, the paint will have transferred from the template onto your paper. And it looks like you can even see the word pig on my spider web. So once that is all done, you'll want to let it dry for just a few minutes. So I'm going to pull out my sample that has already dried. And we're going to add a spider to our piece today. So I wanted to make my spider out of a plastic cap. I got my plastic cap off of a spice container. It was empty, so I just saved the top of it. And what I'm going to do is glue it onto my web that I made. Now, you can do a couple of things. I happen to have googly eyes at my house, so I'm going to glue some googly eyes onto mine. If you don't have googly eyes at your house, all you have to do is cut out two small white circles and then use your black marker to make dots in the middle of them. And then you could glue those onto your spider for the eyes. So that's going to be my next step. I'm going to take my glue. I'm going to place it around the bottom edge of my cap. And then I'm going to stick it onto my web where I wanted that to be placed. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is glue on my eyes. I am using a hot glue gun for my googly eyes. Um, if you choose to do that at your house, make sure you have a parent help you with that. Otherwise, if you use your paper eyes, like the ones that I showed you earlier, like these, you should be able to glue those on with just basic Elmer's glue. So once my spider's eyes have been glued on, my next step is to give him legs. Now spiders have eight legs, so I'm going to put four legs on each side. And there you have it. There's our printmaking spiderweb activity for the day. Thanks for listening.